and you know I'm right. Carlsberg don't do politicians, but if they did, they'd be the best in the world. Hi, welcome to Beef King. How can I help you? Hi, um, I'd like to try your new processed almost beef burger. Okay, sir. That'll be two squillion pounds, 99 pence. See you tomorrow. Oh, okay. Uh, bye. Ah, for f beef and cut off. Get yourself down to Beef Encounter, Carlton Road, Edinburgh for some quality meat. Make your booking now. Just call 0131 452 8453. Edinburgh's West End, home of some of the best shops, restaurants, artistry and architecture in the city. All that combined makes it very popular with tourists and locals alike. It is also home to West Princess Street Gardens. The centrepiece of the West Gardens is one of the city's proudest landmarks, which sits in the shadow of the Paris Church of St Cuthbert, the Ross Fountain. The Ross Fountain is highly regarded as a magnificent example of 19th century cast iron work. It was originally made in the foundry of Antoine Duren in Paris. Duren had the fountain made specifically to be put on show at the Great Exhibition of 1862 in London. The exhibition was a success, as the fountain was described as obtaining universal admiration. So much so, in fact, that a smaller exact replica was made, which now sits in the city centre of Pelotas in Brazil. It was at the London exhibition that an Edinburgh gunmaker by the name of Mr Daniel Ross, who reputably had inclinations to art and natural science, fell in love with the fountain and decided that he just couldn't leave without it. So, after a few years of saving up, he eventually bought the fountain and had it shipped to Leith, in 122 pieces in 1869. However, it wasn't erected and fully operational until 1872, a year after Mr Ross had passed away. The fountain is decorated with a collection of cornucopias, cherubs and mythical creatures. Near the top are four female figures depicting science, arts, poetry and industry, seated between semi-circular basins. The figures were sculpted by Jean-Baptiste Jules Clagman. Are you serious? Are you actually playing defensively? Yeah, well, a draw's better than a defeat. But Dad, it's a game. You don't have to make it so boring. It's not that boring Marina's playing East tactics, is it? <laughs> it really is, actually. Listen, Dad. Thanks for taking the time off work. It's great spending time with you when you're not stuck in the office. It's great. I kind of think I'd better wait to stay my free evenings, also. Well, Mum was here, and she wasn't stuck down in the switch with a room full of suits. Oh, right, sorry, I need to take this. You're always on your phone, Dad. Is that Mum? Hello? Hey, stranger. Your absence at the office was quite noticeable. Something wrong? Oh, hi, Karen. No, I'm just feeling a bit ill today. That was all. How's things? How's things? I'm not one of your mates from down the pub. Speaking of which, I was talking to Michael today about, you know, us. And he seemed quite shocked. I don't think he knew about your wife's death and seemed to think you were still together. <sighs> I just found it weird since I thought you and him were really good pals. Yeah, me and Mike. Yeah, we don't really know each other though. Really? Because he had your address. My address? Yeah. Well, I thought it was weird. We've been going out for a few months and I still don't know what your house looks like. It's not like you've not seen mine. Oh, God, I didn't want you coming to my house. It's a mess. I told you that. Don't be ridiculous. I don't care about a little mess. Anyway, it's too late now. I'm already on your street. My street? What do you mean in my street? I thought you'd need someone to help you feel better. 
Oh, look, Cam, I, I don't want you coming here. Dad, who are you talking to? Is that Mum? David, who's that? Are you with somebody? It's nothing, it's nothing. Who's this? I mean, God, is this what you do on your days off? She's about 18, for God's sake. What's I can't it? believe I've been so stupid. What's it? I, can, I can explain it. It's, Dad, I can it? explain. I can explain. Dad! You said you're no kids. Why would you lie about that? I'm not going to judge you. I don't, I don't care if you're a single dad. I mean, I know your wife died, but I mean, you never said anything about my, your daughter. I mean, what? Get off me, get off me. Ah, you're hurting me. Listen, I can explain. Sorry, I'm not being completely honest with you. I do have a daughter. So I didn't want to tell you. I didn't want to think you were, I was all washed up. I don't, I don't uh, believe this is happening. Yeah, this look, isn't happening. I hate my life right now. I absolutely hate it. I can't believe it now, you see. I love you. Karen, it's you I love. It's you I love. I need you to go. I can't explain it right now. I can't explain it right now, but I will explain it. I will explain it, please. I will, I will explain it. Flash Gordon. Um, Titanic. Right now. Greece. The Lion King. I love that. If you think they're talking about their favourite films, you can guess again. They're talking about their favourite music from films. Songs from films such as Jaws, Star Wars, and The Great Escape are etched into the minds of old and young fans alike. Celine Dion's track for the Titanic sold more than 15 million copies and is synonymous with the film. We caught up with music production student Cameron Smith who told us about the score writing process for the composition of his most recent project. I'm sorry, Dave. I'm afraid I can't do that. When it comes to the audio of the film, especially with the score writing, um, it was it was basically up to me to decide what would fit the visuals. Um, the director of the film and the sound editor, he kind of knew in his head what he wanted and then it had to get my ideas into it as well and develop his ideas. So um, yeah, I, it's, it's mostly up to me to like put it down into what would fit best for the film with the like resources I have but um, it is uh, it is also up to the editor if he likes it or not too. I, I think music can be more important than the film sometimes because I think that music on its own with a film you can listen to the music and the soundtracks on the film on its own but when you take the audio away from a film and you just look at the visuals, I don't think it works as well, to be honest. So I think, I think music is more important, a lot more important. We all go a little mad sometimes. Haven't you? So obviously the mood is heavily reliant on the music in a film, whether that be a boost in tension or a sense of elation. Composer Bernard Herrmann did the score for the iconic shower scene in Psycho, against the wishes of Alfred Hitchcock, who wanted the scene to be silent. Skip forward 17 years, and the Bee Gees track littered the 70s classic film Saturday Night Fever, thus becoming the first example of cross-media marketing. But how important is music to a director? And at what point in the development process is the music discussed? Here's young filmmaker Katrina Stewart to tell us more. 